What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going over five things that I regret doing to my IS-300, five mods, five stuff that you think you would like when you were thinking about it and buying the part or doing it and now you did it and you're like maybe I shouldn't have done that. So let's get into it. So first things on the list, first things on the list is a bucket seat. Don't get me wrong, I, this bucket seat is amazing in terms of like keeping me still, but this is the first bucket seat I bought for this car. Um, first trip to Vent, after that I came back and got this one because I didn't like sliding around. I got a bruise on my knee from hitting the center console. And so it's, uh, I should have went with a full bucket. Um, I knew I should have went with the full bucket, but for some reason, I was trying to clench onto whatever was left of its streetability. At the time, it was a lot more streetable. I kept saying I want to keep this car a street car, but in reality, I've never really driven it like a street car. I've driven it to the track, but you know, it's starting to slowly fade down from that. But I do wish I got a full bucket seat. Don't get me wrong, if it's more of a street car for you and more of a daily, this reclinable is the greatest. But this is not my daily. It literally just sits most of the time and it's it's comfortable, but it's also not the best sizing for me as your boy is a little bit bigger in the waist since the pandemic. And so uh, I really wish I went with a full bucket and it's gonna lead me into my next regret. Do you see? That number, it says it is about 20 and three quarters. Looking at that? Are you looking at it? And that's touchy from here to here. This bucket seat is about 18 inches across. It's getting wider. Yes, 18 inches across. Hard to see, lighting is bad, 18 inches. <sighs> Every bucket of seat that I'm looking at in terms of like a larger frame, Sparco, even the Brides, um, NRG, you're pushing at 20, 21 inches in terms of that width, especially for the larger size bucket seats. If you're a media, you can get away with the setup. And so what I did or what happened was I had these bucket seats, I had two of them in this car, and they built the roll cage. Not their fault, this is totally my fault. Um, I built it with the attention of being it as close as possible to the door card, right? So if I close this door, you can see the fitment is pretty damn close. It's touching on, on most part, right? Which is great. I could keep a door card, but now I am super limited on to what seats I can get in terms of sizing, brand. I've been looking, searching, and I have come up or I found a seat that is about 20 inches. I gotta measure it again, look online. It's about 20 inches. And so uh, it's supposed to fit up to a 40 inch waist and it's uh, 20 inches in terms of the size of the bucket width, the cushions. So we'll see. Um, I wish I didn't keep the door cards. Um, now that I think about it, it's like I'm putting a roll cage in here. It's welded in. It's not like I should have just taken out the door cards and get a little more room. I think it would have been a lot more beneficial for me in the long run. And it's a lot more safer since the roll bar is a little bit farther away from you. So um, totally an oversight on my fault, uh, on my part, but uh, I kind of like, I love the roll cage. Get, didn't get a chance to use it. Well, I don't, I don't want to use it. I hope no one hits me, but uh, I haven't got a tech yet to be able to tandem with it, but it's a, uh, it's one of the investments where you like, I have it, I got it. It's necessary, um, but definitely regret not going full bucket and staying true. I was, who I was, who was I kidding? 
I am a, I am a little husky in terms of my size, especially my waist. Got some big thighs that I gotta fill. And for some reason, I was like, yeah, 34, reclinable, no problem. But you know what? It's a problem. You see the exhaust? The car is still on jack stand. So it's hard to show some of these things, but this is the exhaust right here. This is where a muffler should be. That is where a resonator should be. But uh, I got the car with no muffler, not my fault. Then I decided to cut the resonator because my car was so quiet at the track. And now it is just a touch unbearable driving three hours to events. You know, it's like drones, it's a little raspy. Uh, I had a 4.1 diff and so really high in RPMs and you know, you, you kind of couldn't enjoy the ride as much. And so I regret cutting it off. Um, I should just left it with a muffler delete with the resonator on, but it didn't sound that loud and this sounds too loud. I guess the resonator really quiets down the IS300, so. This muffler just sitting on my desk. This is a 28.99 muffler from eBay. It's a four inch, 4.5 inch tip, I think. Something pretty big. And the thing with this is I'm hoping it will reduce the drone um, and still sound good. Taylor Ray says he uses eBay mufflers on his car and has good luck. And so I'm hoping to get the same result even though he runs his car with a turbo. I don't, but still, it's funny because this came with an HKS exhaust box, but it's actually eBay muffler. I had a silencer, which I probably will take out because it just looks ugly. So see what happens when you do something once, regret it, you gotta spend money again. The other thing on this list is something that I did do is I took it out a while ago and that is wrapping my car. I'm playing it on the screen right now, but three, four, five, six months ago, I wrapped the car in blue, paid about, how much did I pay? 600 bucks, 700 bucks for wrapping, it was on sale. Uh, they actually sent me two rolls in accident, so kind of a good thing happened, but uh, it was not the most fun experience wrapping. I mean, don't get me wrong. The roof, the hood, the doors, the fenders, the quarter panel, the trunk, easy. Once I got to the bumper, the front bumper and the rear bumper, total nightmare. And I had a BN kit and uh, the wrap was not sticking to the, um, the material of the fiberglass on the bumper. I probably should have prepped it. I tried to use different materials or try to like wash it, clean it, whatever. Probably should have primed it and then wrapped it, but still, it's a lot of work just for me to wrap the car. If I were to do it again, I would probably just spray paint the BN kit, because honestly, I probably would have kept the BN kit if I didn't wrap it. It's just because the wrap is peeling, it just looks so ugly. It was not presentable at all. You know, even though I don't care too much how my car looks, it's like, in person, it looks like kind of a shit, but I probably would have kept the BN kit. And I wouldn't have to waste, what, multiple days wrapping, waiting for the wrap, uh, pain of just peeling and pulling, stretching all day long. So uh, if you're gonna wrap, be ready for it. Look up how to do it, look up different instructions, look up, talk to people about it. For me, I wouldn't do it again. I would just paint the car at the same, you know, it's, I'm more experienced painting. I could probably do a better job of what rattle can on my car than me wrapping. So uh, a lot of money and time wasted wrapping the car. So last but not least is wheels. Not specifically these wheels. Ah, not specifically any wheels in general. I have eight or two sets or two, yeah, two sets of these. They're Avid ones. I have the Artista wheels. These are awesome. You can see more avid ones here. And more right here. But that's not the problem. The problem is, I've gone through how many sets of wheels? 
I actually had these sets first. I bought a pair of 17s, of 17 by 8 plus 30 Avid ones, the same ones I have right now. Sold them, bought a pair of 18s, sold them. Also bought a pair of Rotas, Avids, the Rota styles, the TE fakes, TE reps. Uh, bought those, sold them, got RPF ones, sold them. Biggest regret of selling is the SSR Professor's SP1s. Sold those as well. And where am I trying to get at is regret buying so many damn wheels. Could have saved money on tires, could have saved money for around the same set. I was just being super picky of like the style of the car, trying to make it look right, trying to have a good fitment. And today, I didn't really care about fitment that much. I mean, I want to have filled in the gaps. I don't really care for stretch tires too much. And yeah, which is why I bought these Avid wheels like six times, man. Honestly, find the right set of wheels, keep them. If you get bored, I know a drift car, you're gonna break them, go through them anyway. So just get a, a bunch of, keep the ones you have instead of just buying new ones. But, you know, stance cars, whatever, get legit wheels, get whatever you want. Honestly, biggest regret is just going through so many sets. Like I already bought these sets in the past twice and I had to buy them again. You know, that's 600 for a set. That's $1,200 for another two sets plus tires. Not the greatest investment on my end. Yeah. All right, so I realized I forgot to make an outro for this video. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't hate the car. I definitely love it, but there's a few things that I wish I would have done differently if I were to do it again. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.